Hi friends, I'm Maria Miliwara. Welcome to my channel. This was a hard selection to do. Gourmands are both loved to death by the sort of wider um, perfume community. At the same time, having so many options and so many ways what people really define as yummy. I found myself in a really unpopular, with a kind of a really unpopular opinion. And here I, I must kind of like bring the authority of somebody way more known than me to sort of justify um, my general dislike for kind of like mainstream definition of gourmand fragrances. Um, so Jean-Claude Denis, when I was reading his book, uh, nose, The Nose Diary, Diary of a Nose, sorry, um, he actually was one of the people who really concisely put it together. He says, a good gourmand is something that is appetizing. A bad gourmand is something that smells edible. Or maybe he didn't put it quite that way, but you know, you know what I mean. So to find a scent that is sweet gourmand makes you think of a dessert or any kind of like kitchen spice territory but really doesn't go too literal or too odorant because food also gets a fragrant molecules put in it. So a lot of the, a lot of the gourmands are almost too easy to do because there are well-known chemicals that, that will allow you to reproduce exact same smell. And oddly enough, that's not really what, what's popular and that's not really what makes people dream or love gourmands. So there has to be a certain kind of twist, a certain kind of interpretation of our favorite dessert that will make it into a beautiful, really stellar gourmand scent. That's at least my 20 cents of how I approach gourmands. And when I was choosing a selection for you for my collection, I had to be quite brutal in a lot of fragrances that are beautiful, that I love, that I wear, that I have in full-size bottles, didn't make this cut. So maybe there will be a space for me to expand to a part two or like alterations later on. But this is the very first time on this channel when we're talk gonna, gonna talk about something truly appetizing. With disclaimers out of the way, a few honorary mentions because I recently have talked about these fragrances to death. I have to mention them because they truly made, you know, they made the cut, but I just don't want to overwhelm you with the same names. <laughs> First is going to be Histoire de Parfums 1740 Marquise de Sade. I bought it fairly recently and I fell in love with it almost instantly. It was so true to the way Histoire de Parfums composes their like main portrait line, but at the same time so different from the other perfumes from the same line, the one with years that I had. It kind of just stole my heart. So this is the most gourmand with kind of a bit of like dried fruits, kind of raisin maybe, or like dried apricots tones to it for me. And this is the most gourmand leather, leather that I have. This is the kind of gourmand leather that um, to me is unique. There are many gourmand leather scents and probably Tom Ford is one of the most famous kind of hyper luxe brands that makes all kinds of gourmands and leathers separately, both together. But I kind of, I don't, I don't know of anything quite like this. Most of gourmand leather, it kind of is a whole blur into a kind of voluminous, fat, rich, slightly aromatic tobacco, hookah, leather, suede, sweet, 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 tonka beans, vanilla, amber, and all other things. I find that most, even the most gorgeous gourmand leathery scents are a bit um, they are not Arabic enough to be in the kind of gold traditions of Arabic blending and yet they are too heavy for let's say a more of a kind of British nose if you wish you know like uh, for a tradition of more watercolory very clean type of blends so to me I'm kind of I'm not really happy with this kind of in the middle position and Marquise de Sade is very different from that it's not overly 
boiled type of sweets it's very condensed it's well spiced but it kind of stays in its uh, condensed and very profound realm of different notes kind of very they're very tightly woven together and this is why I like it so much as a gourmand leather another one again I probably mentioned this every fifth video because it's first it's my favorite spicy nude second it is a one of my favorites from a tot labor d'orange and third it is an amazing kind of all year round scent if you like thai food this is a tot labor d'orange uh feels the dew feels the dew is dedicated to the culture and traditions of philippines so any of you who actually do have personal connection i'm kind of curious what you think of it do you think these are artistically adapted to be a perfume yet still give you the right kind of reference points of the culture of philippines if any of you know anyone or yourself have a connection please let me know what you think so i'm not super familiar but i love thai food and you know and generally i love coconut so this is probably the most prominent association that i get is the sticky coconut rice there are way more ingredients in here and this is what i love about it it's like such a fine blend the nothing here no note is sticking out it's all kind of very well it's like a shake of all aromatic and slightly coconutty smooth things and spices together and it it sits close to the skin but it's fairly long lasting at least on my skin so I really I really love it for the most edible coconutty scent in my collection I do have other coconut scents but I find them a little bit more predictable and kind of bland you know like SPF cream type of coconut rather than this that really makes me think of some delicious aromatic meal something really appetizing without being too literal uh, talking about another dessert well actually sticky rice is not necessarily dessert but for some um, if you really like lemon curd and you um, like kind of lemon plus vanilla type of um, Cheesecake, I think there are che lemon cheesecakes, there are like different options, but I guess lemon curd is probably the closest comparison that I can find. Shalimar Souffle. I just killed a bottle, finally finished it, very happy about it. Um, here we have get more of a kind of subtle reference rather than a literal interpretation, but I had to mention it because once I got that association i can't get it out of my mind and i primarily wear it as a dessert with my coffee another uh even more realistic interpretation of lemon curd it's called lemon curd by brocard this is a very affordable kind of experimental olfactive studio based i think it's russia and germany so for those of you in europe if you can put your hands on some brocard i highly recommend you do don't be put, a, put away by the cheap price because it's actually one of those very fun and interesting and experimental brands to try. So this is basically, sometimes I see it like Brocard is a totally bird d'orange but very affordable. So they do take a lot of liberties, they do do a lot of experimentation, but they kind of keep it Jo Malone style. It's all very easy to understand it's kind of fun but it's light and it wears beautifully as just a body spray if you wish to do so so one of their collections is called cafe gourmand so all of the uh, bottles look more or less like this and the lemon curd even though it, it lasts probably 10 minutes i adore it every time i spray it around i get so addicted i think this i use just within three days because once you start experiencing the lemon curd by brocard you kind of you can't stop you just want to please bring it back i want more i want more so if you find it good for you you're lucky get it it's it costs nothing and it's so much fun is it the long last longest lasting no no it isn't but for the price i i, I don't think you can beat that a potentially dangerous territory to go to but i decided i'm going there gourmand florals 
very ify. It's not very common that for us to make and associate desserts with flowers. There are certain exceptions, such as violets, which are very popular, like I think violet candies and things like that in France, and roses that kind of you can see here and there, like rose parfait. Certain kind of experimental desserts can be with a rose, and if it was possible to find a really good rose souffle it should be made of, out of this or at least it should smell like this this is uh, a selective line by Elisab it's called essence number no. one rose you can find them on secondary market almost as cheap as 70 60 70 dollars and I must say very good quality uh, kind of one central note with beautiful gourmand wrapping type of fragrances. I've tried Gardenia, I've just finished Neroli, and I'm about to start uh, testing the vetiver from this line. But the rose, I used up the mini in like probably a month. And I was like really trying to be like very sparing with it, you know, minimalistic because I loved it so much. The gourmand here, is somewhat powdery and gonna make a baggy so in a way it's irisy rose but the sh it's kind of like a sugar powder kind of sprinkled on top of the the softest very ethereal rose souffle this is like the best way i can describe it i absolutely love it i understand this is a bit risque um to call these and put this into the best gourmands in my collection but when I really had to think about it a lot of more literal gourmands were not special enough to add them into this video but this definitely was this is the best gourmand rose that I have in my collection now toward things that are a little bit more believable I guess um, and a little bit more I, I don't want to say literal because it has bad connotation but you know a little bit more straightforward I guess with associations. Uh, another history de parfums, but this time Prolix or oh, Prolixe. I think it's Prolix. It's their black collection, which is mo mostly contains different kind of smoked woody uh, woods, all kinds of like heavier, smokier versions of how they inter interpret a lot of different forms of oud. And Prolix, to me, the, the moment I smelled it, I knew what it was for me. It was grilled pineapple. I had the privilege to try like ripe, like just freshly cut pineapple grilled in Hawaii. It's like their national, one of the national desserts. It's really weird when you, if you've never tried it, it's like pineapple grilled, I don't know. It's delicious if you get a ripe pineapple because the ripe pineapple is much sweeter, juicier, and kind of, it's not nearly a start as what we usually buy in the, in the grocery stores. And it just has almost kind of like this meat, meaty, fleshy um, taste to it in a way. Not meaty in a literal sense, but it's just so, thick and sweet in juice, then when you also grill it, it gives the most delicious contrast to the taste of pineapple. So this has it. Prolix actually has pineapple as a note listed, but it has all these smoky, slightly woody notes to it that it's, it's kind of dark and delicious and almost silly because it's pineapple, it's grilled pineapple. You know, like when people say dark and delicious, they usually think of something like black orchid or, or you know, something from Killian or something from Tom Ford. I find that this is way more niche in what I would call dark and delicious, but imagine a grilled pineapple. If that kind of tickles your fancy, prolix, and you can find the, the, uh, the travel sizes, I think this is what, 15 mil or something like that for between 20 and 40 dollars it depends like where you look so it's fairly affordable and it's really well packaged i really like how historic performance packages their travel sizes because they give you the full uh, experience the full design and concept experience even with the travel size the next we're gonna talk about delicious ripe prunes 
kind of like bursting with juice on a sunny afternoon when you're sitting on on like on a fallen tree something of that kind this is the fragrance that they 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 first made for shiseido and then later kind of got moved to the serge lutens line and i think it's the first one they actually came out with so in many ways feminita de bois is the one that made serge lutens its name so if you're ever curious about exploring kind of like core niche houses that kind of shape the century let me know if you're curious to hear my thoughts on like how to approach exploring niche without kind of doing a random walk please let me know it probably that a video of that kind will take a lot of prep but if you guys if there is a need for it i'll make it so serge lutens feminine de bois would be one of the examples the first representative perfume from Serge Lutens line and Serge Lutens really shaped a lot of the history when it comes to development of olfactory design and the niche market in general. It, it's one of the most people-friendly perfumes. As you know, niche can sometimes go um, into very experimental spaces that are not necessarily when it's when the, the fragrance is not necessarily made for you, but you are made to study the fragrance. This is not the case. This is super user-friendly. This is, as I said, sweet, ripe prunes with a few of kind of like Santal woody notes, softening and kind of wrapping them into more elegant composition. So it's both gourmand and sweet, but it doesn't go into the territory of like overboiled sugar candy, kind of like mainstream gourmands. It doesn't really go into this olfactory diabetes area of gourmands. It still stays in the very thoughtful and elegant zone of inspiring and appetizing prunes rather than, you know, something that is like supercharged syrup. So yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. It's not syrupy, but it is, but it, it is sweet prune gourmand. Beautiful stuff. Absolutely love it. As you can see, almost half of it is already gone in my bottle. And the next one will be also by Serge Lutens, and this is a newer, a newer fragrance for me. So we're gonna do a bit of a refresher. This is gonna be a dark horse probably of this video because I don't own a full bottle but I'm dangerously close to like robbing a bank I don't know like figuring out something to get it so I was fortunate enough to find an eBay seller who got me a second decant of this I uh, one of my subscribers actually gifted me a I think like a scent like a small sample and as soon as I tried it I was just, I was just wow okay Without further ado, this is Serge Dutton's Louvre, which means um, female wolf, I guess, like the wolf that is female. This is the kind of intoxicating gourmand appeal that cyanide poison will have. Because, you know, you probably know, if, if you're as big of a fan of Agatha Christie as I am, you know. Cyanide, one of the most famous poisons in detective literature because it smells like um, kind of bitter almonds and this is it there are so many almond scents that I could show you and a lot of them I truly love but in terms of something that makes unforgettable impact this is Serge Lutens Louvre I, I, I think I tried over 10 different almond scents about two years ago when I was on the hunt for the best almond scent perfume. And I, again, I can make a video about that if you want me to, but in terms of nutty perfumes, specifically almond ones, there are some that are more believable, there are some that are sweeter, but this is an experience. This is the kind of dessert that is worth dying for you know like it's so good and it's so like this like a little bit of amaretto sprinkled on that dessert that you you know it has cyanide on it but you're you're still catching yourself a spoon 
it's dangerous it's so expensive oh some of the Serge Lutances are more affordable like the ones that you can find in in similar packaging it's an older packaging now it's kind of like black stuff but they are more uh, kind of more niche I guess like less popular uh, perfumes are now packaged in something that looks like a bell and those those cost a lot a lot so for now I'm gonna just contain myself with this decant but mm, oh, I really want that I really do okay so this is something that blew my mind and that's something that I got from the brand itself it's um, during scent explore so they had a booth and uh, the company called Abaton right am I saying it correctly yeah Abaton they carry a number of niche perfume brands and they were they were they had a booth in New York when I was there and they gave me a few samples of their perfumes and their Chinoto Gourmand is probably the most edible scent that I'm still willing to wear from time to time so Chinoto Gourmand I think it's Italian niche, if I'm, again, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Chinoto Gourmand is essentially, it's something, it's like a mixture of kind of baked caramel and those, oh my god, those little super crinkly cookies. You know, like very spicy cinnamony cookies that are kind of like, they're kind of sandy in a way. Chinoto is basically a bitter orange tree that's very popular and grows a lot in Italy. It's very popular in olfactive creations of Italian brands. So I'm not surprised that they really took that a, as their kind of core concept. So they say that it's a very joyful and energizing, vibrant citrus that gets further in, kind of sweetened and grounded by orange blossom and they, it leads to sweet and enveloping heart with vanilla and caramel. There are a lot of fragrances, especially in the mainstream, that scream of caramel. I don't know if you're like foodies or not, I'm not, but I can definitely tell cheap caramel from like expensive restaurant grade kind of like homemade or you know like craftfully made caramel so this is the first caramel that i actually believe in most of the mainstream caramels to me it smells like those caramel syrups you can add to your coffee in starbucks a lot of people like that and a lot of people like starbucks <laughs> self-evidently but if you're looking for something that has a bit more depth and a little bit more dimension, the caramel here and the overall kind of feel of, of eating these amazing kind of cookie dough, I don't know. It's, it's one of the most gourmand gourmands that I'm gonna show you today, no doubt. I really wanted to add a few a little bit more literal options, even though, you know, I'm kind of like love-hate with them, I told you why, but I still find that they are very, they're crowd pleasers. Every time I wear them, people just kind of like, what is it, what is it, I need a bottle. And they are actually fairly affordable compared to some of the other options I showed you. So the first one is gonna be, it's my favorite out of the two. This is Comptoir South Pacific Rum and Tabac. Comptoir South Pacific is, the whole brand is basically, exploits the gourmand craze of the, rest of the recent, like two, two de decades at this point. But they started kind of like venturing out into a, a cool, like oceanic line, oud line, arabic line, and this is more of a kind of spice line that they have. So rum and tabak, it kind of hard to find sometimes, but if you find it online, usually it's fairly affordable. By that I mean within $60 mark. So I had a travel size, I used it up, then I bought another travel size because I couldn't find the full bottle, and then I found the full bottle and I bought it too. 
and every time somebody asks me for like a decant swap or I'm like I'm preparing like a, a little olfactory care package for you know for friends or family and if somebody asks me for a you know a gourmand option that that, that that's not gonna hurt their wallet you know like give me something that I that I'm not afraid to fall in love with so to speak I usually put this a little bit like a few mils of this in because it's fairly affordable I mean it's not more expensive than any Miss Dior or any of like the other kind of mainstream um, department store kind of fragrances and the same time it's deliciously slightly dark rum it's like a, like alcoholic a bit of a kind of gives you a little bit of like bur bur bourbon type of feel it's it has this beautiful, very characteristic vanilla that's come to our South Pacific, perfected to the most edible state the vanilla can be in perfumes. And it has some of the hotness, I feel like slightly hotness. Is it pepper? Is it ginger? I don't know. It's like slightly spicy sweetness. And it's overall very wearable. It's wearable even in the morning. It, it's kind of like it's not heavy enough like some, you know, again, Arabic gourmands could be. It's very, it's almost, it's that close to be work appropriate. For some work environments, it's totally fine. I find that probably in, in the more strict work environments, this could be st a bit frivolous because of the dark rum note, primarily. But I love it. I'm actually now killing my um my travel size like i'm finishing it up and it's 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 just such a quintessentially beautiful perfume for fall i love it love it and always recommend it to anyone who's looking for an affordable but good slightly cocktail like gourmand and the second one which is more of a crowd pleaser um so the the rum and tobacco is my personal favorite out of the two but if you compare these two from the same brand this is the one that people kind of go nuts for at least in the states this is come to our South Pacific Vanille Banan. This is banana pudding. This is just it. Delicious. It's like a warm, amazing, freshly made hot banana pudding. It has believable banana. It has all of these like vanilla slash kind of, maybe even cinnamony kind of sweetness. It's just, this is it. I find it a little bit literal but I can't deny the fact that this is a crowd pleaser. It's probably one of the most popular decans that I've ever put out. And oddly enough, it's not as easy to find as some other vanilla scents that they have. You know that Come to Our South Pacific has like everything plus vanilla, but vanille banan is actually a bit of a, a rare find. So if you really want to give it a go, I have some of the cheapest decans on the internet because they're from my personal collection. I only have like, you know, probably here I have like three left, maybe four at most. So let me know, let me know if you want to split a bottle. Okay, now we're going toward a territory that is a little, a little bit more niche, but it's not in any way less delicious or worth searching for. Kekumu Cherry Lukum. So, by the way, if you've never seen the smallest, <laughs> the smallest sample size on the planet, Lucky Scent really beats every record. I don't know, is it like 0.5 milliliters? It's, it's truly the smallest sample sizes I've seen on the internet, but fine. Um, thank you so much to, to my subscriber of mine who actually shared the sample that she got for herself. So, Kehumi Cherry Lukum is one of the few uh, interpretations of Rahat Lukum, which is Turkish delight, on the market. There is Serge Lutan's Rahat Lukum, which I had and gifted to somebody who loved it way more. That one is a bit more rounded, a bit sweeter, and a bit more prominent almond note in there. Very prohibitively expensive now. Uh, the Serge Lutens for Hot Lacoum. The Keiko Micheri Lacoum is frequently compared to that. If you want my 20 cents of this like 
a decade-long war of people comparing it all over forums and for granting the comment sections. Keiko Micheri Lukum is softer and it's more Rahat Lukum, it's more gourmand and more like edible version. The Serge Dutan's Rahat Lukum, as I told you, has more of almond, it's a little bit more punchy and a little bit more abstract, therefore. If you're really looking at super believable Rahat Lukum, I think Keiko Micheri really got it, got it formulated like to the T, to perfection. Actually, a friend of mine, after trying this, like from this teeny tiny vial, went ahead and she immediately bought herself a huge decant. Very hard to find online. A cake and sherry can be found here and there, but Lukum, good luck. Just good luck finding a full-size bottle. It's, it's a crowd pleaser. It's one of the best-selling perfumes from this brand. And uh, Arquiste Animal Dulces. One of the better blind buys from Sandbird that, that I did. To me, these are the perfect kind of dried fruits that you can have with herbal tea. I adore herbal tea with the dried fruits. Apricots, raisins, prunes, sour cherries, you name it. Dried bananas, even better. So Anima Dulcis, I only have a, a decant and I kind of like kind of currently using using it up little by little the animal dulces bar kist is one of the more as i said dried fruits so it's it's a gourmand that has a bit of this kind of oily somewhat somewhat sour edge to it the same kind of sourness that separates a fresh ripe apricot from you know dried apricots that separates fresh ripe prunes from the dried prunes so it's both sweeter than the real fruit but it has as you see like a little bit of that concentrated slightly sour oiliness that appears after you process the fruits this way but i love it i love it so much i, I desperately want a full bottle and again the soon as I like something, sure enough, it's just, it's impossible to find. You can find almost any other perfume by Arquiste for like fairly good discount. Anima Dulcis, just nowhere to be found. Or like the price is almost like twice as expensive than on their official website. It's crazy. My life is just unnecessarily difficult at this point. I don't get it. I wish it was different. And a few even more rare options for those of you who are kind of like connoisseurs of niche. So this, I don't, I, it's like, I don't know if you can see it. It's, it's that much, it's like less than a nail left. And this little sample has been passed from blogger to blogger, from fragrance reviewer to fragrance reviewer as like, equivalent of gold, of liquid gold, because such expensive, such rare niche. Okay, let me put some on. Only for review. I almost never wear it because it's just, I don't know, at this point it has some kind of holy grail status in my collection. Um, so this is a Russian niche by Nikolai Yeromin. I think it's a little bit more accessible in Northern Europe than elsewhere, but don't quote me on that. So the one that I have here is called Cafe Italy. The brand that, that he creates perfumes for is called Nimere. Nimere, 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 I don't know. Um, I'll try to put the, the names in the description down below where I can. So this almost makes me think of Atar because the, the perfume is so concentrated and kind of a little bit oily and the, the, the fragrance also so potent that at first it almost gives me a little bit of a shock but not with alcohol notes but you know with kind of like oily vibrancy of the scent and then when it starts sitting and warming on the skin there's just like all kinds of magic that starts happening. I don't know if this is the 
just the the, the sheer consequence of like the solution of how they actually made this particular fragrance or is it just the general quality of Atars? If you actually really like perfume oils, please let me know how do you compare them in kind of natural spray, for like alcohol type of formulation versus oils. I'm super curious about it now after I tried the Cafe Italy by Nimere. Nimere. But it's such a unique experience you know we rarely really talk about this when we discuss perfumes we try to kind of abstract it to almost like as if you you eat just like a cloud of, of like of molecules in the air yet we all wear it somewhere somehow so this is the perfume that made me think of in how it's made into what solution it's put and where and how to wear it on myself so this, I think, 100% has to be worn on the skin for you to even get a glimpse into what it really is. And Cafe Italy gives so many gourmand kind of like notes. It kind of like, you know, this accord, then that accord, then this, and it all changes in time that I struggle to explain what it really smells like. Definitely a lot of kind of like different fragrant cookies and some vanilla cream and some and some also like some berries made not necessarily based, it's not tart, it's not sour. It's like there's so much in it. It's like indeed like sitting in the in the really big and like popular dessert cafe somewhere in Milan. And just being bombarded and everything looks good you, you want to try every single slice of every single cake and you want those truffles and you want those cookies and this and this and this and you just overwhelmed just like how much delicious dessert goodness is there around you so this is the kind of perfume that this is i wish i could tell you like where and how to buy it but i also could not make this video without mentioning it even though it's prohibitively kind of like hard to find, but if I was the gourmand lover, as I told you, probably Chinotto Gourmand is worth hunting down and Cafe Italy by Nimera with the perfumer Nikolai Yeroman. This is just, this is just something else, honestly. And the last one is a contender. This, I really wanted to show because I'm testing it now and it's a beautiful gift from a set of samples that was sent to me by Ole Bar. Olechka, привет! Um, she is known very well in the New York fragrance reviewer community. She's been working in the fragrance industry for like over a decade. So, Ole sent me like a set of different like hyper niche or like really rare or interesting in her view perfumes that otherwise I probably wouldn't really know where or how to try. And she she did it within like with assistance of Oswald uh, perfume boutique in New York. It's very well known. And I think like half of New York perfume reviewers were like raised <laughs> on 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 the perfume that they sampled in the Oswald. I think they have two perfumes, uh, uh, two boutiques, one in New York and one Switzerland. I think it was one in Zurich. So this one is undoubtedly a gourmand. This is called Miringa Perfu by Perfumum Roma. It's a new niche brand for me. Let me know if you tried anything, what people say about it. Is it new? Is it old? Does it have like some of like the best known uh, like fragrances that kind of like made them the name? P please let me know because to me it's completely new. So I don't quite know what to think about it yet. Perfume Roma Miringa. Miringa is basically quite a literal, not literal, but like it's an olfactive interpretation of the dessert meringue. So predictably, should have certain citrusy plus vanilla vibe to it. It's undoubtedly gourmand. It's not as sweet as I, I, I'm afraid it could be. It's actually, you know, it's sweet without being cloying. However, I must say there's something, I think there are some white florals here that give me a bit of this kind of baby shampoo vibe, or at least somewhat soapy, but in a very cheerful way, you know? 
Moringa actually makes me think not of the kind of like a restaurant where you del del like order delicious dessert or like a Italian cafe that where you're surrounded by amazing like handcrafted desserts. This makes me think of a many kind of fun young hipster type of cupcake shops that used to be opening up all the time everywhere probably a few years ago now probably not so much and you know like where you get maybe the cupcakes are not the best and maybe like they're not the most creative but it's a fun experience just to go there you kind of like you know this like per like proverbial Saturday brunch with you know with girls something like that so this is the kind of gourmand that it is to me it's not super complex it's not super deep it's not very serious but it has a bit of this kind of like flirtation in it some like don't take yourself too seriously kind of vibe it's an interesting contender and I, I thought it's worth mentioning here because I don't really talk about gourmands a lot now you know why but those that i do have i truly enjoy now i turn it to you what i the most gourmand gourmands in your mind maybe they're already in your collection please name them tell me how big of a bottle is it if they're still not let me know why are they too expensive are you kind of like not sure you're gonna wear it every day just I'll be waiting for your feedback. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.